And, um, now we're handing over to Charlie, who's going to talk to us about OER co-creation with students and the community. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so, hello and welcome to everybody today, including everybody who's following along online. So, yes, my name is Stephanie Charlie Farley. Please call me Charlie. And I go by she, her, hers pronouns. So, I am from the OER service at the University of Edinburgh, where I work with Lorna Campbell and quite a number of colleagues across our information services group. We have, so our approach to open education uh, resource and practice is actually focused on awareness, um, digital literacies, and confidence. And we are quite fortunate, as has been mentioned, in that we do have a learning and teaching policy um, about OER, which sets out uh, guidance and the ways in which the university is able to support the use, um, creation, and sharing of learning and teaching materials both within the university and as part of our civic mission, which, which has also been mentioned, sharing that out to Scotland, UK, and the wider international commons. So our OER learning and teaching policy was implemented in January 2016. And this same year, we were approached by the teaching staff on the geoscience outreach course. So the geoscience outreach course has been running for a number of years now, and their focus is cross-disciplinary. Um, they seek to improve science communication, to provide their students with hands-on experience, reach a diverse audience, widen participation in research and education, and to do this through active engagement. So during the course, um, over the year, students choose their own projects based on their own interests and passions. They are then paired up with local schools, care homes, uh, conservation, community, garden, and other public groups across the UK. These students, uh, they work together for that year with the groups and they will create a piece of science communication or an educational resource that will be available for the group that they're working for. They have created videos, lesson plans, board games, websites, smartphone apps, community dinners, um, workshops, groups and more. The output that they have created has been fabulous and diverse. And the clients and the groups that they are working with have continued to use those resources as the years have gone on. So it felt to the teaching team on the course that incorporating open education practice, skills, and the digital literacies and confidences involved in that in their course would benefit not only their students, but also the groups that they were working with. So to do this, um, they brought us in to work with them and we spent a couple of years um, building this up. Students are provided with seminars throughout the year to give them the tools and the skills that they need to work on creating their projects. We now include within that an interactive seminar on OER, open licenses and copyright, which has been really well received. The open content, licenses, and attribution are also built into the final project assessment, and students are made aware of this right throughout their course. So they know that they need to carefully check and attribute everything that they're using, and that they will be assessed on that at the end as well. In addition to this, we have some fabulous summer interns that we've been hiring who come in at the end of the project, and there are a few projects that the teaching team will generally select. Our intern will then work with the students and the teaching team over the summer to check attributions, make changes where it's necessary, and then they will package and promote 
these projects as OER and disseminate that across multiple um, areas. So we have been incredibly fortunate in the interns that we've had coming and working with us these last few summers. Um, Lorna has already been quoting one of them, uh, our fabulous Martin Tasker. So Martin was with us in 2016. Uh, he had a great time. So Martin actually credits his entry into physics in higher education with the open resources that were provided by MIT when he was a high school student. And he feels, uh, and he has stated this in a few of his blogs, um, and also in the quote that Lorna was talking about earlier today, that this is what enabled him to follow his passion and his interest to take that into higher education. Martin was great, he worked with us over the summer. Um, he then also returned the following year and helped run the open licensing workshop for the next intake of outreach students. This last summer, we had Thomas Sanders, who came in and again worked and created some fabulous resources with our students. He then came back and, as is seen in the picture up here, he actually presented at the local um, Open Educational Practice Scotland conference. Um, he did a fabulous job there. He has also gone on to run a Wikipedia editathon for his School of Sis History um, groups. And he is creating his own open educational resources um, related to the debating team activities that he's involved in. So I'm just going to talk about a few of the projects that our outreach students have been creating. And what's really lovely and wonderful to see is that the skills that they are gaining through this process are continuing on in their personal, professional, and education and research lives as they continue on up this course. So Roseanne Smith uh, used a timeline to explore the concept of sea level rise with high school students in her project, The Sea Level Story. This experience actually inspired Roseanne to help establish Scotland's own children's university. And she's still involved in this on a day-to-day -day basis, providing um, out additional outside of school hours opportunities for um, primary and early education students to gain additional learning. Isla Simmons is currently a fifth year um, geology master's student and for her fourth year outreach project she shared her passion for volcanology by creating and delivering a series of lessons to primary five students at a local school. She was incredibly chuffed when one of those students came back after the summer holidays with a volcano cake that she had baked. <laughs> Isla is now a tutor on the outreach course, and she continues to teach about volcanoes in primary school and science fairs. Uh, another one that I'm really quite pleased with, um, Rebecca Shannon created fun statistical methods workshops for final year secondary school students. These were positively received by teachers in Edinburgh and through the power of Twitter in Norfolk. And she then went on to create a set of Pokemon themed posters with our intern over the summer, focused for primary learners, um, which have also proved quite popular. So I'm going to let the students um, tell you what they think of the course as well and what they've learning, been learning. So Georgiana Dusklova has said that the course provided her with the unique opportunity to combine her scientific knowledge with her horticulture family history. She created the Trinity Gardening Club and taught secondary school pupils about agroecology and wildlife friendly farming. The teaching experience she got reaffirmed her decision to pursue teaching as a career and inspired her to strive for innovation and community engagement. And Hannah Stevens uh, has said that geoscience outreach proved to her that somewhere in her she had the confidence and skill to not only create lessons that fit within the Scottish school curriculum, but deliver them as well. The support provided by her lectures and supervisors helped her succeed by encouraging the ideas that would work and letting her bounce ideas around with them. So students really have been enjoying and taking away a lot from this course and the skills that we've been providing through the addition of the open educational focus in that as well. The gaining experience of science outreach and public engagement. 
they are getting first-hand experience of teaching and learning and the practices of knowledge transfer. They are developing communication skills, a wealth of transferable skills. Project and time management is incredibly important to their project throughout the year. And they are really building on their digital literacy. Benefits for staff and tutors are also great. So it allows them to communicate work to a wider audience. It adds value and teaching to their own research. And they are able to enhance knowledge exchange. It also provides support for dissemination of the scientific knowledge coming out of the schools. The clients and the community groups involved are also getting a lot out of this course. They're gaining reusable resources that they can take on and change and adapt and use in the years to come. They're forging new partnerships with the students, with the university and with the other groups who are involved in the projects. They're getting the value of the educational resources that have been created and they are also benefiting from benefiting from the dissemination of the scientific knowledge coming from their own groups and research. Brian Cameron on the um, outreach teaching team has really summed it up um, in that the university and the students are creating a legacy of knowledge transfer and cooperation that benefits all. And it really is, and it's wonderful to see. The course is not only limited to the geoscience school students. So it's been getting a lot of attention within the university and out with. Um, in the 2016-17 academic year, they were joined by students from the psychology uh, department who went on to create some absolutely fabulous resources, including attention and advertising tactics, prejudice reduction strategies, and a fabulous resource on an introduction to the brain. And you can have a look at all of these on our open ed website. In the 17-18 year, um, this is broadened, so we now have students on the course from ecology, geology, geography, psychology, archaeology, and landscape architecture. And I'm really excited to see what projects they're going to be creating and what we're going to be working with and putting out there this summer with our next intern. This has also changed the way the staff uh, involved in the course have been looking at their own work. So they have actually gone on to create open educational resources based out of the latest research to come from their school. So Kay Douglas uh, from the teaching team has created a wealth of resources and these have been specifically tailored to the Scottish school <laughs> curriculum as well. Again, these are all available on the Open Ed website and I really would recommend going and having a look because they're fabulous. So I'm a bit, bit, bit pressed for time, um, but I just wanted to shout out to the course organisers and everybody involved in the outreach course because the passion and the dedication that they have shown to their students uh, to increasing their knowledge and ensuring that the projects and the resources to come out of this course are going to be useful and valuable, not just to the students and the groups that they're involved with, but also to a broader audience has been absolutely magnificent. So the course organiser, Isla Meyer smith has been fabulous and I've really enjoyed running the workshops with her. It's been wonderful working with the teaching team. So we've got Brian Cameron, Colin Graham, Andrew Cross and Kay Douglas. They're absolutely amazing. We've had external contributors and the tutors on the course have been absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, that's all the time that I've got today. Um, but you can find more information about the course and about the work that we're doing on our Open Ed website. And there are further articles about the geo geoscience outreach course that are available as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Another inspiring um, presentation. Any questions? Yes, one at the back there. Thanks very much for that presentation. Absolutely inspiring work. So I'm, I'm very glad I got a chance to see that. Uh, my question is that with all of the experience from students that's being um, uh, gathered as a part of this project, uh, are there any plans to, uh, to use that kind of experience and those perceptions to inform university teaching practice and also teaching policy around openness? 
I have to say this is actually an aim of the teaching staff involved in this course. So they are really committed to really getting as many other faculties and schools involved in this process as possible. Um, that's why you now see so many students from other schools and faculties are now coming in onto the course. And what they're really pushing for and would love to see is this approach to be taken on by other co courses within their own structures. So yes, absolutely. Great. More questions? Um, there's one over there. Hey, I'm just interested in sort of how it works logistically as it broadens to other subject areas. So did you, do geosciences still own it and are there structures at Edinburgh University that, that kind of make that work? I think so the course is run within the School of Geosciences and um, it's still run and owned by that school. And what's happening is now they're inviting students from other schools to come in on and take the course within the geosciences school. Um, they would absolutely love to see other schools taking this on and embedding it within their own courses and programs, though. So we'd love to see that happening. Yeah. Okay. Another question towards the back there. Hi, thank you. That was really interesting. Um, my question, I'm not sure if this is relevant to your particular case, but we are looking at creating an OER repository and one of the things we're facing questions on is how we um, make sure that the resources are kind of effectively managed and so reviewing them every 18 months or two years and just wonder what process you're using to, to do that. Are you shelving resources or? So we actually looked into having a repository as part of our OER service and we've decided against it. And our approach is actually around the, the skills and the literacies and the approach and the practice of our students and our staff. So on Open Ed, we actually encourage that they share their resources on whichever online platform is most suited to the media um, and the type of information that they're sharing. So we have a number of resources on uh, TES Connect. We have accounts on Flickr, YouTube, Vimeo, um, all over the place. And our approach is really, these are openly licensed resources. They're adaptable. Please do share them wherever they're going to have the furthest reach and serve the best benefit. And they're adaptable. So the version that's out there now is not necessarily going to be relevant five years from now, but it's adaptable. So anybody can take that and improve it and update it. So. The idea of going back and reviewing something that was created three years ago isn't necessarily a priority for us because we feel the people who are going to be using that resource will be making those adaptations and have the ability to do so because it's been openly licensed. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. One more final question? Yes, here in the front. Can I just ask a follow-up question to that? Do you have any evidence? Just for the streaming, thank you. Sorry, just a follow-up question to that. Do you have any evidence of people actually going back in and uh, remixing or adapting or, or improving those resources? So the ones that we have on uh, TES Connect, we can see the usage on that. So we can see where they are being downloaded, um, how many times they're being viewed. And we do get feedback every now and then, so people can choose to leave a review on there and say how they've enjoyed it. And we do have some excellent reviews and comments on there. But this is the thing with any open resource, it's really difficult to track back and see who is reusing and remixing. So that's really all that we have at this point. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, I think we've um, ended exactly on time. So um, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you. And another thank you to Catherine and Matt and Charlie again for a really inspiring presentation altogether. Thanks.